Now, in these somewhat limited bands of what we can see from space down to Earth, what are some of the trade-offs of the different colors and, and bands? So normally when we think of remote sensing, we're thinking of optical yeah. images, like photographs that you might see with the human eye. Now, the benefit of this is it gives often the best resolution. You can see sharp details. It's easy to interpret. It's a picture. Yeah, exactly. And humans have evolved to look at pictures. The trouble is it's blocked by clouds, haze, and night. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same problem we have in astronomy. If you can't see up, up can't see down. Yes. Yeah, so cloud may not be too much of a problem in the outback of Australia, but if you're trying to look at you know, the Finnish military build-up on the border with uh, or, Russia or something like or that. Or along the equator where it happens in to be... In winter <laughs> yeah, yeah, There yeah, are yeah. places where it's cloudy most of the time. It's going to be tricky. And of course, if it's a military application, the enemies know that and will move their troops when there's cloud over. Yes. There are also large parts of the world which are very hazy from pollution. Yep. Like around most Indian and Chinese cities. That's right. There's often so much haze, you're not going to see much detail because of the constant pollution. And then, of course, night, right? You actually need to be able to visually see what's happening. And the only way that's really going to happen in the optical is reflected sunlight on the surface. Yeah, I mean, you probably see a bit from moonlight and you can see street lights and things. Yes, that's right. Uh, but if you're trying to look at crops in the dark, good luck. Not going to be helpful. Um, so the simplest sort of optical remote sensing is so-called panchromatic, which is you just take a black and white picture of the sky, some part. So essentially you just, you don't take a blue or a red or a green, you just take essentially all the colors you can see. Yes. And this gives you the best detail. Yep. And, um, it allows you to see the sharpest images. Um, but it doesn't, and, and you don't tell, I mean, we can tell here, car park buildings, this is often very useful. But if you're trying to say, does that have a lot of grass or not on it, you can't really tell that with this. So the next thing you do would be to take images of multiple different wavelengths. Yep. And it could be blue, green and red, which makes it look like a, a colour image seen by the human eye. And you can yep. see this is green and that's not so green. So the grass there is in better shape than the grass over there. That's right. But you can also have, tune it to different wavelengths, ones that might be narrower than the human eyes can see or mm -hmm. different from the human eye can see. And this can often tell you a lot of very useful stuff. That's right. We talked about this at length in the uh, Planets Park yes. course. Uh, but here, for example, are different sorts of minerals and how much light they reflect at different wavelengths. So if you look at these different wavelengths, you can see, uh, you know, here's chlorite or here's yeah. chmilite. So, for example, uh, uh, epidote uh, has a big dip here, which means if you observed it at that wavelength, it'd look dark, whereas you, that one, it would look bright. Mm. Whereas something that's different, like gypsum, would have a quite different thing. So if you look by enough different wavelengths, mm. you cannot just tell there's a building or an enemy tank there, but say it's made of this. Yes. Or you can discriminate different types of plants and whether they're healthy or unhealthy. This is for crop yields and That's things right. like that. So you can really get a lot of detail more than just looking at the colors of light our eyes can see. Yes. So sometimes all that matters is I can see a tank there or whatever it might be. But sometimes this is what really matters. Is this grass healthy? Yes. What, um, is there going to be iron ore in this region? Things like this. And the most fancy method is so-called hyperspectral, which is where they actually take a spectrum of every point. That's right. Again, something we as astronomers are very familiar with. And this allows you to really pin down exactly what's there. But there's trade-offs with everything, right? The more you break up the colors of light relative to what your CCD can handle, that affects your resolution as well. Yeah, you've now got far more data on each pixel, so you're going to be able to download far fewer pixels. Yeah. So it's going to get you, you have to have less resolution. Or less area. Um, and it's, it's, you need brighter uh, light to be able to spit it up like this. Yeah. So it's not a, it's a trade-off. Another thing you can do is observe in the visible, this is Tokyo, mm -hmm. or in the thermal infrared out at maybe about 10 microns wavelengths. And so this is surface temperature. So you can actually dramatically see the temperature, you know, is much harder here than say, well, obviously the water, the ocean or the riverways. Yeah, so you can see cold areas like the various gardens here and hot areas like the, the built up parts of Tokyo. Yeah. So this might be useful for spotting uh, uh, badly insulated areas. This is, of course, invented by the military for spotting rockets being launched. That's right. Because when someone fires a rocket, there's going to be a very bright plume and you want to know as soon as possible if it's a ballistic missile heading your way. Exactly. So a lot of infrared work was used for spotting when uh, military activity is going on. Uh, but certainly infrared can tell you temperature and yep. all other things. It's because it's a longer wavelength, the images are not going to be as sharp. Yep. Um, but still, it's a, a very useful thing you can do from space. And I think you, you highlighted as well, it's also combinations of it, taking an optical and an infrared image, which can tell you even more information. So let's say you see a new building has been constructed in some enemy country. Um, the temperature can tell you if it's being used or not. That's right. Uh, or unless it's very well insulated. So by combination and the spectrum might tell you what it's made out of and whether the grass around is dying. And, yep. and so by looking at all the different techniques, you can learn quite a lot.